Before we go back to the Wireshark interface, I want to use this video to tell you a little bit more about packets. More specifically, I want to tell you about the TCP packets. TCP is a type of protocol used in the transport layer, layer 4. In our previous videos, I mentioned that TCP provides reliable transmission of packets. This means that if a packet doesn't get sent properly, the TCP protocol would detect the error and send it again. I also mentioned the three-way handshake. This is a three-step initiation process that two devices use before transmitting packets amongst each other. Now, I want you to know that after all the data has been transmitted by both sides, they will need to formally close out their connection. This process is called the TCP close connection. In step one of the TCP close connection, I will send you a FIN packet with a sequence number along with an ACK packet that indicates your next sequence number. The FIN packet is the opposite of the SEND packet. It tells the other device, OK, I'm done sending you packets from my end. In step two, you will need to acknowledge my FIN packet along with my next sequence number. At this point, my TCP connection has ended and I cannot send you any more data. However, you can still send me your data. After step two, you can choose to send more data or you can move to step three to close your connection as well. In step three, you will send me your own FIN packet to close out your TCP connection. After your FIN packet has been sent, you cannot send me any more data. Finally, in step four, I will acknowledge that I received your FIN packet and our connection is finished. You should now be familiar with the SIN, FIN, and the ACK packets. These packet types, by the way, are also called flags. I want you to memorize them along with three other popular flags. There's the urgent flag, abbreviated U. This flag tells us that the data is urgent. There's the push flag, abbreviated P. This flag tells us there's data in the packet. And then there's the reset, RST flag. This flag appears when there's an abnormal close of a connection. For example, let's say I sent a packet to an IP address at port 80, HTTP. If the recipient device is on but port 80 is closed, I will receive a packet with an RST flag. The RST flag says there is no conversation, I won't say anything, and I won't listen to anything you have to say. Refer to your memorization sheet for a list of things that I think you ought to memorize. Memorizing them will help you when we get deeper into packet analysis. Let's go over some scenarios of how we can use Wireshark to detect an attacker. Let's say you captured a bunch of RST packets on Wireshark. Note the different ports that are returning the RST packets. This indicates that someone is doing a port scan. Before attacking, an hacker would perform a port scan to see what ports may be opened on their target. With 65,535 ports, surely a large number of those ports being scanned will return a reset packet because they're not available. Another way to detect an attack is if you saw two R packets that assigns an IP address to more than one MAC address. If you remember, I told you the R packet was a way for computers to find out whose MAC address belongs to a specific IP address, so they can send a three-way handshake and send data. Well, sometimes a hacker will send fake slash spoofed ARP messages on the network, claiming that their MAC address belongs to another device IP address, so their target will send their packet to the hacker device rather than the intended recipient. This hacking technique is called ARP poisoning or ARP spoofing. As an analyst, you'd want to look into something like that. Spoiler alert, you'll be using ARP poisoning to perform a man-in-the-middle attack during our ethical hacker portion of this course. Attackers leverage ARP poisoning to perform this attack by sending spoofed ARP packets to the target and the intended destination device. The destination is usually the internet gateway, such as the router. Once successfully carried out, both devices will forward their traffic to the attacker, and the attacker will read them and forward them to the intended recipients, so the victim won't notice something is wrong with their connection because they're receiving responses. All right, enough of the whiteboarding for now. Let's jump back into Wireshark and do some hands-on packet analysis. See you on the next one.